Greetings all, Last Outrider here with the next part of Who Are the Death Watch? This time focusing on Watch Fortresses. A Watch Commander and all of his kill teams under his command are based in a Watch Fortress. Such places can take many forms. Some are mighty deep space stations whilst others are imposing fortified keeps on a planet's surface. Some are impenetrable installations many miles below ground, whilst others are hollowed-out asteroids bristling with weaponry and protected from prying eyes by arcane cloaking systems. Within each watch fortress, the kill teams train and prepare for coming missions. Each fortress combines the functions of command center, keep, archive, garrison, and more. The watch commander often coordinates the monitoring of a hundred different threats, or his attentions might be focused exclusively upon one single overriding concern, towards which all of his efforts are turned. The Watch Commander is assisted in his duties by a cadre of specialists, some of whom are Space Marines, such as Tech Marines, Apothecaries, and the like whilst many more are the equivalent of chapter serfs. Some are specialists, seconded to the staff of one or more inquisitors, whilst the greatest number are monotasked servitors. Amongst the most important members of the staff are the astropaths several of whom are always present on any watch fortress. At all times, at least one astropath is locked in an armored savior chamber, sometimes referred to as the Ebon Coffin, with its own life support system, which is isolated from that of the fortress. In the event of the facility being overrun, it is intended that this astropath will survive long enough to transmit a message to the nearest inquisitional bastion, or space marine homeworld. Giving such a message out is far more important than the astropath's individual survival, of course, and many have committed suicide rather a fall into enemy hands once reasonably certain their message has been received. That being said, one astropath in the service of the Inquisition is known to have survived for six months within his savior chamber, whilst hideous drogue slithered around the fortress and rasped ineffectively at the chamber's armored hatch. By the time the fortress was retaken, the poor soul was quite insane and put out of his misery soon after. The number of kill teams stationed in any given watch fortress varies enormously. Some are home to only a handful of battle brothers, whilst others host several dozen kill teams. Despite the small number of warriors stationed on even the largest watch fortress, it would be suicide for an enemy to attempt an attack on one, even if its location could be determined. Each bristles with weaponry, much of it controlled by hardwired servitors, or 
filed remotely by the watch commander's staff. Some are even said to be protected by great cannons and banks of missiles controlled by autonomous machine spirits. At the heart of each fortress is to be found a sealed vault containing the most sensitive and valuable of assets. It is said that some of these vaults are encased within stasis fields, that time stands still within even the most ancient and crumbling parchments can be preserved. Other vaults are said to be encased within quantum displacement fields, so that they are not actually located in the watch fortress at all but exist out of phase with it, so that, should the fortress be destroyed, the contents at its heart will survive. Exactly what is kept within these vaults depends upon the mission of the individual fortress and the threats it guards against. Some contain vast libraries of forbidden texts, knowledge so terrible they may only be consulted when the very fate of humanity itself hangs in the balance. Alien artifacts of unknown or devastating potency might also be sealed within the vault, affording the savants of Ordo Xenos the opportunity to study them whilst they are kept out of the hands of those who would use them for the detriment of mankind. Some watch fortresses even maintain a stock of the most exotic of weapons, which are kept safe in the vault and only brought forth in the most dire of situations. Here are found the warheads of the cyclonic torpedoes used to extract exterminatus upon a world. Some weapons are unique and so potentially devastating they may never be disturbed. The singular relics of the dark age of technology. This includes such artifacts as the anti-baryon detonator held in a watch fortress at the heart of the ghoul stars, and the supermassive starbane vortex cascade generator secreted within the eon-locked Ormond repository near the Ring of Fire. Aside from these sealed stocks of weaponry, each fortress contains vast stores of conventional arms and ammunition, sufficient stores to last for centuries without resupply, are held in the watch fortresses as well as all of the heavy equipment normally utilized by the space marines, such as artillery and vehicles. Many of the weapons are venerated relics crafted by long dead master artisans whose names have become legendary amongst the space marines. The larger of the watch fortresses are home to all manner of training facilities. In vast domes, unique environments can be recreated in which the Battle Brothers can perfect their battle drill and rehearse their missions. Some of these domes have been stocked with life forms such as Death World Flora and Fauna in order to create the most realistic training conditions possible. It has even been known 
for captured aliens to be set loose in the training domes, to be hunted down by the kill teams in deadly mission simulation exercises. Although no resource is spared the kill teams, it is usual that each battle brother lives an austere existence in the watch fortress. It is common for each to maintain a personal shrine at which he undertakes the devotions and rites particular to his own chapter. A battle brother seconded from the Ultramarines chapter, for example, might maintain a simple chapel dedicated to his Primarch, while one drawn from the Mortifactors chapter might keep vigil before the flinched skulls of a hundred slain enemies. When not engaged upon a mission or a training exercise, and not meditating at his own chapel, the Space Marine may rest in a cell, which is seldom more than a bare, stone-walled chamber. Space Marines require little sleep, however, and most of their time is spent either in battle or preparing for it. In addition to the watch commander, watch captains, and kill teams, a great many, though not all, watch fortresses are host to an inquisitor of Ordo Xenos. It is the role of this individual to communicate the strategies of the Inquisition and to coordinate them with the missions of the Death Watch. The Inquisitor is more of an ambassador than an overseer, and has no direct control over the Watch commander or his forces. Rather, he provides a link between the two organizations ensuring that the ancient pact between the two bodies remains in place for the defense of all mankind. Next will be watch stations. What's the difference between a watch station and a watch fortress, you ask? <laughs> well, I guess you'll find out next time. Until then, bye.